It's England versus Germany. 25 years on from Gareth Southgate's penalty miss, he's now the England manager. 11 years ago, Lampard's goal that wasn't. Germany knocked England out of the World Cup in the round of 16. So now, 2021, the two sides meet again. So let's look at how the two sides could set up this time around. Before that, if I could please ask you to click the like button on the video, it's very much appreciated as it helps the videos getting found. And if you do like the preview at the end, then please consider subscribing to the channel to never miss future content on the channel. Well, let's take a deeper look into how the teams have performed already, the stats behind their performances at the Euros. To do that, we can use the sponsor for this video, OneFootball, a fantastic app for your phone to view all the stats you'd ever need. For example, on England's profile here, we can see that straight away that defensive record of zero goals conceded. Swiping down here, we can see England averaged 55% possession in their group matches, but I expect this to be lower against Germany. Two goals have been scored and both of them have been inside the box, and overall, England have had 18 shots in their three matches. Then moving over to Germany stats which look like this, five goals conceded and zero clean sheets so far. Their passing is impressive and 90% pass accuracy and they've made the second most passes in the tournament. Averaging 64% possession as well shows that they will have more of the ball, that's why I said England's 55% won't reflect this match. In attack, six goals scored with all of them inside the box and 30 shots in total. You can view all team stats, the latest videos and news and player stats too on one football. Much needed this summer for transfer news as well, so click the link in the description to download one football on your phone. So let's discuss Germany and where they will threat England the most. A player England need to watch out for is Kimmich. He's been a dangerous player for Germany, with 10 passes into the penalty area being the most for the team, followed by Robin Gosens on 6. It shows Germany's main threat of getting the ball into the box comes in the wide areas, and particularly from the wing-backs. Joshua Kimmich and Robin Gosens, they've both had the most touches in the attacking third for Germany. The player to really make things tick for the team is Tony Cross, a world-class midfielder we all know will cause a threat. The ball gets out to these wingbacks from Cross, who has played the most progressive passes in the tournament with 45. Their match against France is what England need to use to take tips from France. Germany failed to score against them. After France got their opening goal in the second half especially, the midfield is really what made it hard for Germany. France did sit back a little more in the second half, and with the midfield of Pogba, Kante and Rabiot were aggressive and intercepted well. And then it was Griezmann in the front three to be the presser at the front, closing down and he attempted the most pressures of any French player. Now, it was the early goal that allowed France to focus on defending where they saw out the game, but a similar approach by England where they can look to counter and probably have a little more of the ball than France did in the second half of that match. But if they did do that, it could really hurt Germany and Germany will have to keep moving the ball side to side from one full back to another and they aren't getting the space to be able to cross into the box. So if England are compact with the midfield three that are defensively strong, with forwards possessing speed to counter Germany, this may be the setup that hurts Germany the most. On Germany's side, while they will be concerned by how many they've conceded with two against Hungary, two against Portugal and one against France. No clean sheets so far will be on their mind and England also need to have this on their mind too as Germany are there for the taking. We've seen quite a few times in this tournament already that Germany are vulnerable when they're being countered. Examples are Portugal's first goal scored by Ronaldo and also Hungary's first goal. Both of those goals were quick breaks where Germany weren't set up defensively and the opposition took advantage of that. So England needs in this match to up the tempo, especially when there's an opportunity to counter, something which we haven't really seen from them yet. The reason why this really is effective is due to Germany's fullbacks being the main creators out wide and they push up high, leaving space behind. And their centre-backs, well, Hummels really, isn't that fast. We saw Mbappe in an amazing race with him, which showed how the pace against Germany's defence can be dangerous against them. The Germany 11 picks itself, really. There was one change against Hungary with Sané starting for Muller, but I'd imagine Muller will be back in for a knockout match. In terms of the forwards, Gnabry, Muller, Havertz, only Havertz has scored so far with two goals this tournament. Gnabry and Muller have only had two shots on target between them, Havertz has had four, so he's definitely the forward in form to look out for. Germany's goals against Portugal were close to the goal and the chances that they created made it easy to put in the back of the net, so this is what England need to avoid. Stop the wide players from crossing into the box near to goal, which is what they want to do, this is what is most effective for them. So how can they do 
do that and what is the starting 11 for England? There are many options that England can go for. The 4-3-3 as mentioned worked well out of possession for France, although made it difficult for England to attack with against Scotland where an attacking player was needed in the middle. A back three could work and originally when the match came up I felt like this was the perfect option for England to stop Germany attacking. To push Germany's wide players away from the areas where they can be most dangerous and to give a good platform to attack. However, this formation makes it difficult to choose between the attacking talent as you've only got two wingers in the forward line to pick. A 4-2-3-1 is what I think works in possession but maybe leaves you vulnerable to Germany's attack where they can get a lot of space in the areas where they can hurt England. Finding a balance in this match is tricky, attempting to make it hard for Germany, including your attacking talent, and choosing the right players for the system. The 4-3-3 is maybe what gives you that. As much as I think it was difficult to attack with against Scotland, I think what can change that is the speed in which you attack, and also allowing the attacking player from the midfield, so Mason Mount, to push up centrally and help out the fullbacks or the wingers to break down Germany's defence. These are two ways in which I think you fix the attacking issue, up the tempo on the counter and let Mount roam into central areas. This midfield gives you a range of qualities, attempting to replicate what France had with all the players being good defensively. What is really important here and I think can be very effective in the match is Mason Mount's pressing on the left over to Joshua Kimmich. We singled him out as one of the main creators for the Germany team and with the pressing that Mason Mount offers out of possession, I think England needs to utilise this in the best way possible and I think that's by putting him on Joshua Kimmich. As usual, Rice is central and can almost drop between the centre-backs at times to congest the box and then either one of Jordan Henderson or Calvin Phillips which is a very tough decision, there's not much between them. This creates a good midfield which can frustrate Germany and push them into the wide areas where England can then press them higher and not allow their wide creative players Joshua Kimmich and Robin Gosens to get to the byline near the box to be able to cross into the box. France had Antoine Griezmann in their forward line applying a lot of pressure especially on the Germany centre-backs. So for England you could have this in Raheem Sterling, Phil Foden would also be good in this role. But I have Grealish and Sterling for the balance of a creator in Grealish and a pacey goal-scoring winger in Sterling who has proven he can do it in this tournament. I didn't used to have Raheem Sterling in my starting 11s in the build-up to the Euros but he scored both of England's goals and I can't see any way in which Gareth Southgate leaves him on the bench. Like I said earlier, a back three can be effective in congesting the areas where Germany want to be creating chances. But I think it hurts England at the same time as you want Jack Grealish, you want Mason Mount, the speed in Sterling, Foden or Saka. In this formation, you get two wingers to choose from and it becomes difficult as I don't want to drop Grealish. I know Sterling isn't going to be dropped by Southgate. Saka at right wing back could work with Walker behind him, but I think you're forcing it when Reese James can be effective in this role anyway. I'm not against this formation as I think it can work in the match, but I do want to see Mount in the team as I think he can offer so much in a knockout game. Mason Mount pressing onto Joshua Kimmich to be more positive in the match and let him attack, but all the while he suits what this match is really all about and that's defending strong. So right now I go with the 4-3-3 and I'm going to predict a 2-1 win for England. Comment your predictions below. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and for more analysis and insight, subscribe to Route 1.